right, our next uh, inductee comes from the sport of baseball, Mario Delgado. And here to introduce Mario to you is an OCU Athletic Hall of Famer himself, our assistant baseball coach, Keith Lytle. It is an honor, and uh, I want to tell you something. I know that Keisha, not to get off subject, you know I love you, and you know why? It wasn't just because I always told you we're the greatest number 22, and I used to tease you. You were so true in your words a little while ago when you said when people first see you, they want to get to know more about you. The way you play the game of basketball just is every coach's dream in any sport that you played it right, sweetheart. It was outstanding to watch you go through your career here, but you're a heck of a better person than you ever were a basketball player. We know you agree. Congratulations. <laughs> First time I saw Mario, I was out in Arizona on a recruiting trip, and uh, I was at a junior college all-star tournament. Actually, it was a fall classic that they do. They take all the top sophomores from the junior college circuit in Arizona. And, and it's a showcase for coaches to go in and watch and, and look for talent. And uh, long story short, I saw one of the most awesome displays of hitting that I ever saw on any recruiting trip I'd ever been on in my life. And I came back so much so, Mario was one of those guys that when you watch him sitting in the stands, you realize he's a little bit above your capabilities. This guy's going to have offers to every major Division One college in the country. And I knew that. I talked to his coach, and, and Sky and I were really good friends, and, and you know, I had to chip in there. Sky, we got a chance with this guy? No, nah, he's going. And he did. He ended up signing with Miami. But I remember I came back from that trip, and Danny asked me. He said, Keith, how was the trip? And I couldn't talk about anything else other than this guy that I watched hit that we had no chance of getting. I mean, fellas, and ladies and gentlemen, he just absolutely crushed the ball. I think he was four for four that day with three doubles, but the only thing that forced them to land was the outfield wall that they that the balls crashed into. He just crushed the ball. And I kept telling Danny, this guy's so awesome. And Danny's like, well, big deal. Tell me about the rest of it. We ain't getting that guy. <laughs> but lo and behold, that, uh, the year goes on. We play our season. That spring, well, in the fall of the following year, when Mario was down at my University of Miami having signed, I get a phone call from Scott, his junior college coach at Alpha. And he goes, Keith, you need a left-handed hitter at the break. And I said, yeah, that would be real nice. And he goes, uh, well, I've got a guy for you. And I said, well, who is it? And he goes, are you sitting down? <laughs> and I said, if you tell me this is Mario, I'm getting on the next flight, and I'm going to come out and give you a big kiss. And sure enough, it was. So I got all excited. Now I had to get him to convince him to come, because he had other people calling him too, Lewis and Clark, I think if I remember correctly, there was a couple other uh, NAI schools that were calling him. So I go in and I tell Danny, we got a shot, we got a shot. And Danny's like, yeah, okay, you know, you just, hey, until it happens, don't come to me. So I called the next night and I talked to Mario on the phone for a little bit and he goes, you have to talk to my mom. And I said, okay. So I get on the phone. I'm talking to Mario's mom, and she's asking me all these questions. She's like, well, what's the, what's the environment like there? What, how are the people? Are they going to treat my son well? And I'm making, but I kept saying, Mrs. Delgado, we'll take care of your son. Mrs. Delgado, I promise, he'll like it here. All of a sudden, in mid-sentence, she corrected me, and she said, Coach, I go by Mrs. Lopez. And I said, oh. Uh, and I felt bad for a second. I didn't know that. But then I saw something very special came up in my mind. It was Mrs. Lopez. I'm married to a Lopez. <laughs> my wife is named Jane Lopez, her maiden name, and I told Mrs. Lopez that I'm married to a Lopez. She really liked it. <laughs> I was like, yes. And long story short on that particular subject, I thank my wife along with Mrs. Lopez for two years after that happened because we were able to acquire one of the greats, in my opinion, and Danny's too. I know when you look at it from two sides, pitcher and hitter, the best player to ever play this program. For two years, I thanked my wife too. 
Little did I know when we got married, I, her maiden name was going to be become a big factor in OCU's success. Guys, I could sit here and go through these numbers with you, and I will for a second, but the ones that matter the most to me are how much his numbers affected our team. And that's typical. I know that's common sense. But 2000 and 2001, uh, conference player of the year. And 2001, he was the national player of the year. And two seasons here, he hit, he had a 207 hits. That's really hard to do. And it's even more difficult now because the schedules are limited more so than when Mario was here. But it's still 2000, uh, 207 hits, 122 runs scored, 38 doubles, four triples, 37 home runs in two years here, 166 RBIs. But also, to add to that, he also pitched, like I said earlier. He was a two-way guy, left-handed pitcher. He went 16-3 and three on the mound for us as a pitcher as well, and a 2.73 career ERA. He was drafted after his senior year here in the 13th round of Philadelphia Phillies. And if I remember correctly, after your first year in the Phillies organization, you were rated ahead of Ryan Howard on the prospect list within their top prospects in the Phillies organization. And that's pretty impressive. I mean, I, it, it's, it's incredible what he did on numbers-wise. But the really neat thing for me is, is that from a hitting coach's perspective, I love hitting more than anything in the world. I can sit down and talk hitting all day. Once in a while, and all you coaches that are in this room, regardless of what sport you coach, there's a certain science to the game that you coach, and when it's done correctly, when it's done at the highest level, the pinnacle of the level that it can be done, you just sit back in awe and go, my gosh, that's how Mario was when he hit. He's a good pitcher, but this guy could break. I mean, he just absolutely crushed the ball. I've had the pleasure of coaching some, and Danny and I both, with some really good hitters in this program. I've had the pleasure of coaching and being around guys like Josh Hamilton, Nelson Cruz. Mario was in that category. I mean, literally, you could go out and put your back to the outfield wall and stare at the wall, and I knew when he was hitting. The ball made a totally different sound off the bat when he hit. It was just engulfed by the bat. And the fear that he that he was able to put in opponents, especially pitchers, people that are 60 feet, 6 inches away from a batter or a hitter like he was, it's, it's pretty fearful. You might throw 88 to 90 miles an hour, but when he hit it, it's coming back over 100 miles an hour. It's your head at times. One of the pleasures that I had, though, coaching third base, regardless, is it sometimes that I'm so close to the field when I'm coaching third, I used to love the comments that third baseman used to make about him. One in particular I want to share with you, we were playing Wayland Baptist one year down in Plainview, and behind their left field wall, there's a middle school, I think it is, Danny, isn't it? It's a gym that's back there, I thought it was a school. Anyways, in the middle of this building, that's way out there, there's a big, huge air conditioning duct that's on top of this building. And Mario came up in this game, I don't even know if he remembers this particular hit, but he crushed the ball. I mean, you couldn't hit it any harder. Imagine, if you will, any of you that golf, when you just really center a ball up, and it just flies off the club, the club head. That's what it looked like. He looked like he hit a golf ball with it, and it just screamed out to left center field, and it kept going and going anyways, and it hit this big air conditioning duct that was well in the middle of this building. And I turned around and I watched the ball, and I mean, it brought silence to the stadium because you cannot hit a baseball any harder than that. And, I, and what was even more impressive is he's a left-handed hitter. He didn't pull this ball. He hit it the opposite left center field. And the third baseman looked back over his shoulder to the point where Mario hit the ball, and then he looked back at me, and then he looked again. And he looked at me again, and he goes, Coach. I said, yeah. He goes, what do you think the chances are that that air conditioner still works? <laughs> I said, slim to none. <laughs> I mean, but it was an incredible high hit the ball. But I'm, I'm not going to take a whole lot of time. Uh, Mario's going to get up here and talk to you guys. But what I want to do is tell you a story that I learned that really, really self, it, it explains what I've learned as I go through my career in baseball and how special he is. Years ago, I was managing out in Harrisonburg, Virginia. I had a player named John Zuber that went on to play in the big leagues years later. And he was a special player, special talent, special person, all the ingredients. 
And one day we were playing against a team called New Market who had a coach by the name of Mo Weber. I loved Mo. At that time, I think I was probably about 24, 25 years older than most, and I was managing in a very prestigious collegiate league. Mo was 72 years old and still coaching, and I loved him for that. His passion for the game of baseball was untouchable by anybody else, and I, it, it taught me a lesson right there that I hope when I'm 72 years old, I told him this, I hope I still do it like you do. Because I know I'm going to be doing it, I just hope I do it as well as he does with the, the intensity. Well, anyways, he came over to me after the ball game one night, and he goes, that John Zuber, he's a pretty good player, isn't he? And I said, oh, coach, he's special. I said, you know what? I wish I had nine of them. And he taught me the, one of the best lessons I ever learned as a young coach. He looked at me and he goes, Keith, be thankful for the one you got, because they don't come around too often, do they, Keisha? They don't come around too often. We've had some great players that come here, but I'm proud to say, Mark, you were one of those guys. And I, I love you for that, not only being so talented, but being such a good person. But I know, as I introduce you tonight, all the accolades and accomplishments that you've made in your, in your life, I can look to your immediate left and know that those two right there, and your mom said you're right. You know, i got to say something, I almost forgot this. Mario, when you play here, and every once in a while, like all student athletes do, you get a little off track and you start, you know, you're going to class, and I, you, I used to use your mother as a form of... And you did. You remember that? Because when your mom talked to me on the phone, she said, "I want him to do well in school." We promised you would. But every time you get a little off, it was so. He loves you like no tomorrow. And that's one thing I love because your son's exterior-wise, he's so tight. But in here, he's got a heart as big as this room. But it all starts with mama, and I know that. I all of you, the cutest little girl I've ever seen in my life, and I know you're your daddy's biggest accomplishment. So, with that being said, will you please help me welcome Mario to the table up here on New Year's Eve. I give her a hard time sometimes. And 
I thought I'd leave. I kind of said, sorry, what's up? But she's not there. I should be saying to her. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to say sorry. So I guess that's not. Not that, and that father, you know, you don't really know how to be sensitive sometimes to the right people. But I'm going to say that. Thank you. I'm going to stop crying for everybody. Because <laughs> I'm supposed to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. 